Well, here we are, folks. The end of a very ugly game. Sean, 30 to 6. Not what I expected today. Uh, end to an ugly game. Uh, what many will call an ugly season for the Frogs. Uh, ends in a, uh, I don't know if this is fitting or not, Foster Sawyer interception at the goal line after Kenny Hill is taken out of the game and looks to have seriously re injured that ankle sprain. Yeah, it. Uh, Hill had just made a miraculous first down. Left us in pretty good shape with eight seconds left. Foster comes in, throws the interception. And that's, you know, that's just kind of the story of the game today. Story of the season. Story of the season. Story of the season. So we, we've been so good on the road and have been absolutely terrible here at home. Frogs had six three and outs on offense. Couldn't get anything going. Um, the few times we did have some sparks, they, for whatever reason, the offensive game plan just went away from that. Um, we saw Anderson a couple of times in the first half, got us going, got a good spark, and then we didn't see him again until that last series at the end of the end of the fourth quarter. And uh, I, I just, I just don't get it. I don't know why the why the play calling went that way. Um, the defense got lit up on the ground. I, I didn't see what the final stats were. Uh, what do we have rushing here? Uh, Ertz. Led with 170 yards, and Silman has 133. So they had 300 yards on the ground just out of two players. Um, I think they only had two players who were actually catching the ball for K State today, but they were big catches. Those two players had more yardage than our entire team. Playoff gain is 495 to 280. 495 to 280? Yep, and held the ball 34 minutes. 34 minutes, 34 seconds. Ugly game. So, yeah, if, you, if I had a bottle of bourbon right now, I'd be drinking it instead. I'm just going to have this crappy grocery store cooking. I'm, I'm going to have my to, I'm gonna have to bring a flask for the bowl. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no way around it. Um, I, I don't know. I I think the, the storyline of this game was that uh, a, couple, a couple of – let's start off with – it's all bad news, but let's start off with a couple of good things. Okay. It's a haku. All He's, over the field. Oh, he played great. Uh, I mean – Fantastic. He was he, he was kind of spying on Ertz. Obviously, you can say 170 yards for Ertz. He didn't do a great job, but I'll be honest with you. A lot of the times where Ertz was running, he was running away from Izahaku. Um, he was constantly looking at Izahaku to see what he was going to be able to do. And Izahaku, for the, for the most part, did a really good job. Had a lot of really good plays. A um, couple of good good uh, good tackles out there, and a couple of good position plays where he was able to kind of bottle up the runner and push him towards the boundary and wait for backup. Um, Isahaku had a really good day. Tejada had a really good day. Tejada was fantastic. He, he has stepped up his game the last, oh my gosh, uh, four or five games in the season, five, six games, and he's really become the player we knew he could be and the player he was last year before his knee injury. Absolutely. Small and Orr had a, had a bit of a rough day. Um, there were a couple of plays and there were or just – Unfortunately, just took a wrong took a wrong angle or slipped up. The field conditions here weren't were great. Um, Small had a decent day for the most part. There were a couple of a couple of coverages that were blown, but for the most part, the secondary did a good job. Um, the linebackers on the line, though, unfortunately, it was just a really really bad day for them. But like I said, there were a couple of good bright spots on the TCU defense. They gave up 30 points at Kansas State, but when you have six three and outs on offense, I don't know how much more you can expect. Now you're on the field way too much, and, and you know, so, uh, I'm thinking Patterson probably ought to go to the team hotel to see if the offensive line is still sleeping in their bed there because <laughs> it looked that way. Yeah, they, it was uh, bad. They might as well not have been shown up today. Yeah, the offensive line. Um, I, I don't. I don't know what to say. Um, I, I'm at a lack of words. No, I, I, there's not much you can say about this. It was uh, Hicks couldn't get anything going. Um, Sawyer was constantly pressured. Hill, when he was in, was constantly pressured. And, and then the drops. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I, I couldn't even count the number of drops. Uh, I know Stewart had three or four easily just by himself. DR's had a couple. Uh, Slanina had one after he fell down. Uh, Williams had a drop. Thomas had a drop. I mean, it was it was a it was a pretty bad bad side all the way around for the TCU offense. Nothing could get going. Um, when there were passes that were made, even even ones that would extend drives, they were dropped. Penalties at inopportune times. It was a sloppy sloppy game for the offense. And again, it, it just kind of the the theme of this entire season. Pretty much, and there's not much not much more you can say about it. You know. You know. I'd read the stats, but you've already gotten these key things here, so 
Uh, you know what? They'll we just um, close this one out and go on to the bowl game, and hopefully, since it's my road, we got a better chance of winning it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm with you on that one. Adios. Bad game. Bad game. Just bad game. All right. Well, it, it looks maybe like we're going to Memphis. I think the, uh, nope. like I said, the conventional wisdom of the pregame, I think we said if we won this game, we had an inside track for Houston. Otherwise, it's going to be Memphis. So I think they have that. Uh, I don't even know where I put it anymore. Where is it? Here it is. So, uh, <laughs> Liberty Bowl. Uh, that's Friday, December thirtieth. Kickoff at eleven a.m. You know, and and let's at least end it. We are going bowling. We are going bowling. It's a six and six team, yes, but we are going bowling. And um, you know, at least this isn't like a Charlie Strong Texas team where they have three years where they're just wandering the desert. Um, this team was rough coming out of the gate at the beginning of the season. We saw some cracks, especially in that first game. And, uh, they just never really could put together four straight quarters. I think the, the Baylor game is a bit of an anomaly on the, on the season. But um, other than that, this team is 6-6. Six and six. We are going bowling, and, and we look forward to a good bowl game. We do. And like I said, since we'll be on the road, we might have a shot at it. Well, you, you never can count out Gary Patterson's team with a month worth of preparation. No, he's so, very good. You know, at this point, I guess, what, 27 days of preparation. So... We'll find out which bowl game we're going to go to. Probably, is it going to be tomorrow? Probably tomorrow. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow, and, and uh, we'll be cheering on the Frogs wherever we go. And uh, looking forward to the basketball game tonight as well. So, That's Arkansas you know. State, so if you, didn't, if you didn't come to the football game, go to the basketball game. Support the team. It's indoors. It's indoors. <laughs> no, I mean, you know. It's warm. They might have coffee in there to keep you going. I, I would hope. I would hope. I would hope. So, all right. Well, all right, Sean. Well, it's been another season. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, hey, go, go Frogs. Frogs.